Hey rollers, I am so glad that you are here today. I am gonna be showing you two recipes that are so easy to do, you may wanna give them out as gifts. So let's get started. So the first recipe I'm gonna show you is, a, it's called a tomato cream sauce. I've made it a bunch of times. So I, I thought I will put make some and just put them in the freezer. And then my thought process started working where I'm thinking, I'm gonna make some to give to our closest friends. So it's a really delicious, I, this is kind of some leftover from another batch I made, but it is a delicious, thick, creamy sauce that is so, so good over pasta. You could probably even cook it with some chicken as well. It is so good. Now it is, I, I found this recipe from the Pioneer Woman. Um, so I will link it down below, but this also is a thicker sauce so that you could use some, um, some of the pasta water to thin it out to your liking. So a little will go a lot further too. So I kind of like that. So I went on Amazon and I bought a lot of these, maybe like 14, I think it was in a pack of 14 and um, they're 24 ounces, which is what you get out of spaghetti sauce. So I'm just super excited to get these together. And then we'll start the, the second recipe, which is so good too. So let's get started first. We're gonna need, um, I'm gonna be doubling it. So I'm gonna be starting off with my butter and my olive oil. So because I'm doubling it, it's gonna be four tablespoons and four tablespoons of butter. So it's definitely a rich recipe. All right, let's get that to get nice and hot. So it sounds like everything's ready to go. It's on medium heat, so I didn't want to like burn it, but I'm gonna add some garlic. So I'm just doing about three teaspoons. But it's really your preference. It even says it calls for a, uh, four cloves of garlic. So I just did basically three for a doubled. <laughs> it's pretty good and it's really strong already. So we're gonna give that about a minute and then we're gonna start adding the sauces. I wanna get all the sauces out, all of it. So we're gonna be using four cans, four 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. Mm, my kitchen is smelling all kinds of good in here. Mm -mm. So once I get all of this out, we're gonna add some minced onion. Let's get some of that minced onion. It's kind of what I envision a whole onion would be like. And we're gonna do a teaspoon of salt. And, and about a half of a teaspoon of pepper. Plus, I like to add some basil. All right, so we're just gonna let this cook on a low, medium low to low, and let it go for about 30 minutes. And most of that is done. Yum. I'll show you what it looks like as it's getting closer to go on to the next step. Now, do you give out neighbor gifts or family gifts of home-cooked meals or maybe some treats like cookies? Let me know down below if what, what you're doing, um, if you're doing something this year. I know it's been a little bit tricky with what, uh, what's been going on, but I just feel like I tried it. If I do make some cookies, um, which I am for our neighbors, that I'm just gonna put it in a display that's gonna be beautiful. So that way it looks like it is ready to eat and scrumptious. So I might add, even add some um, little candy kisses on there too. Um, and then just kind of um, decorate it with some nice ribbon and stuff. Uh, and don't forget a card. Uh, so I, there's about five different families that are our neighbors that I'm gonna be passing out some cookies to. Um, and then I am making just for our good friends, uh, some uh, a dinner pretty much. So I'm really excited about this one because I'm hoping that there's leftovers for our family too. <laughs> one thing I forgot to add is a dash of sugar. So I will put about um, 
not quite a tablespoon of sugar. Now it is ready to go. Keep on simmering, keep on simmering. I wanted to show you before I take it off of the, the low burner that it's coming together so nicely. Um, I gave it a little taste and I just added a tiny bit more salt. That again is also on preference. Um, but look at that. So it's kind of like, um, it's kind of thickened up a little bit. So what we're gonna be doing is adding some ingredients to thin it out a little. So as it's finishing up, the, uh, the simmer is nearly done. We are gonna add some heavy whipping cream and some Parmesan cheese. This one has a Romano blend to it. So nothing better than adding some stinky cheese. <laughs> this is the good stuff too. So we're gonna do that. And I wanted to show you, I changed out some of my, um, my decor, my pictures for a winter. So let me show you. So this was in a grouping of 10 different um, winter pictures. And um, it was on Etsy for like $11. So I printed them all out and I'm using them around the house and stuff and in my, my restroom downstairs. But now look, you guys, it doesn't have the little boat down there that looks like a bug. All right, so I've taken it off of the burners. You can see it's right on the granite. So I'm just gonna add um, a cup because it, does, it doesn't really say like how much you should add of the uh, Parmesan cheese but I'm just doing about a cup per recipe. And then I'm gonna give that a quick turn just to kind of get it started. And um, I'm gonna bring you closer because my favorite part is about to happen. So again, I'm just trying to get those to kind of melt in a tiny bit. Um, so while this is all happening, um, it's cooling down because the cheese was refrigerated. Uh, so we're gonna, Oh, I like this. This is good, looking good. And then, of course, adding the, the heavy whipping cream is going to drop the temperature, hopefully, hopefully pretty quickly. Then we'll be able to pack them into the, the plastic containers. So it's a pretty easy process, and it happens fairly quickly. So this is within 25 to 30 minutes. This is my favorite part. So one cup of heavy whipping cream per recipe is that it starts to change colors and it looks delicious. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> so I think that this is something that if somebody brought to our family, I would be so happy. Like I wouldn't have to cook a dinner or or even just making it for like a, a get together. It is a crowd pleaser for sure. And especially around this time of year when we have so much like sweets going around and like, you know, heavy meals like turkey and mashed potatoes or ham and potatoes. I tend to crave some pastas during this time as well. So I think it's just to kind of offset some of that the meat and heavy potato type dishes. And this, look at that, you guys. Oh man, so good. So I'm just adding the last of the sauce to our containers. And you can see they fill them up nicely. So it makes three of them. And it is, I'm gonna let these come to room temperature. Um, and then I'm gonna put them in the freezer. And here's my thought process is when I deliver them, um, I'm gonna have a couple of the recipes right out of the uh, out of the freezer. So in case they can't get to it, that they can just put them right into the freezer and have it enjoy another day. Or if they want to use it, then it's just a quick thought and they can enjoy it even that night. So I don't know, but tell me what you think about that idea. Or if you're making it for your family, you can go ahead and use them and you can even put them and store them in Ziploc baggies. I've done that before and put them right into the freezer. So it's good stuff for sure. They'll love it. Okay, so we're gonna move on 
to the next recipe. Get ready, it's gonna be so good. Okay, ready for recipe number two. It'll complement this uh, meal so good. We're going to be making French baguettes. Now I have a super easy recipe from the Food Nanny. Now she's known for the Kamut bread, but I'm just using regular um, flour. So we're gonna be subbing it out. So first things first is we need to get our um, yeast blossoming, blooming. That's what it is. We need to get our yeast blooming. All right, so I am doubling the recipe. So I just took a cup, which would normally take a half a cup, and because I'm doubling it, um, but anyways, the, blo the blooming method is still fairly much the same. You have to have it somewhere between 105 and 115. So I just microwaved it for 30 seconds. And I'm gonna be putting three tablespoons of yeast and then two sugars, two teaspoons of sugar. Sugar makes this process happen really quick. So how long do you let it sit here? I'm gonna cover this up with um, some saran wrap. I'm just kind of getting that all mixed in. It's like maybe somewhere between five and 10 minutes, not very long. You're gonna watch it and it's gonna rise really fast. So that warmness to it is gonna just activate it. <laughs> I'm just going to cover this with saran wrap and just put it off to the side. While this is going, I'm gonna get my mixer ready with the rest of the ingredients. Okay, so to this, I have five cups of, five cups of flour. I'm gonna be putting three teaspoons of salt and then two teaspoons more of sugar. So basically that's it, you guys. So what we're gonna be doing, just kind of watching it, I'm gonna put my dough hook on, on my mixer and then um, you can, I'm gonna show you what, it's been like maybe a few minutes you can see it's already starting to rise. So I'm just gonna give it a couple more minutes and then we're gonna get ready to get started. Not even a couple more minutes and it's like practically overflowing. So we wanna get that in first. And now we're gonna need two more cups of warm water. So what I'm gonna do is just give it like a, a two more cups. All right, and then we're just gonna start the mixing. So I'm first getting that yeast going. It's gonna need more water for sure. But I'm just going to pour it a little bit like where it seems to be the most dry. So I have this amount of water to work with. And, I, and most times I don't even use it all. Okay, so the process is nearly done. Like I didn't even use all of it. So maybe like more, like a cup and a half. We're just getting it nice and um, like a more like an elastic ball a little. Like you wanna see it not super sticky. Um, if that's the case, you just probably add a little bit more flour to it. But I'm just kind of getting those glutens in there to kind of start pulling. And then we're gonna get going to uh, slicing it up. Before I start um, flouring my surface and doing the next step, I need to do a couple of crucial things. So I have my oven going at 450 degrees and I'm also going to be adding um, just a little uh, water bath. This is going to keep it nice and uh, moist in the, in the oven for those, um, this for, so the baguettes can have like a, a crispy uh, crunch on the outside and then really soft in the middle. And then I sprayed my baguette pan. Now I got these off of Amazon. It came in a two pack for like 10 bucks. And I gave the other one to a friend because I know she cooks too, or bakes bread a lot. So um, I love it. I can, normally can double this recipe and that makes me four. So that's perfect. So I'm gonna get this all ready. It's time to get the dough out. So I've just floured my surface. We want to kind of dip it in because we don't want it to be um, sticky at all. Just giving it a little bit of a, a turn in it. 
And now we're going to give it some uh, four even um, pieces. This whole process um, probably takes maybe an hour top. So this is a really good, fast recipe. And you can have fresh baguettes for dinner tonight. Just kind of roll those out. They don't have to be perfect. So this kind of has like a skinnier part and then a, a bigger bulb at the end. You know, they have like these like rustic looks to them. I don't like mine like super long, which is probably why those pans came with two. Um, so I like having them a little bit more uh, manageable, so to say. Could you imagine like rolling? <laughs> that would be a lot. Like so, like that. Okay, so now we're going to use a very sharp knife and give a, um, just a, a kind of more superficial kind of cut, not too deep, not all the way down or anything. And then we're just going to cover these up, you know, not more than 30 minutes. It might be about 15 minutes, 20 and 30, just kind of what we're looking for is about double in size. All right, these are ready to go into the oven. It probably took about 15 or 20 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna be watching it. It's supposed to cook up to 15 minutes, but I'm gonna start checking it about 12 minutes on. I don't want them to get too burnt or anything like that. So I can't wait. All right, these just came out of the oven. Look at how beautiful they are and listen. You can hear that there's got a lot of crunch on the outside. They're looking good. So you know I had to show you and taste it. So these are, I keep one for us, obviously. Mmm, it is so good. How easy was that? Within an hour, you could have fresh baguettes for your dinner tonight and and also the proud factor that you did it. Ooh, so those two recipes, I will link down below the yummy sauce and the yummy baguette. Let me know down below if you end up making any of these recipes and I'd love to hear your feedback. Have a wonderful day, rollers. Stick around. You just never know what I'll be rolling out next. Bye, everybody.